What's up guys, Fantasy Joe back here with some more fantasy football content. In this video we're going to be talking about some of the franchise tag fallout that has taken place. Now that the franchise tag deadline has come and passed. I'll be discussing all of the offensive players that were tagged that are going to have a big impact on fantasy and the talking about both the non-skill positions and their impact on the skill position players as well as the skill position players and what their outlook is headed forward being tagged or not being tagged. So without further ado, let's get into it. And if you haven't hit that sub, sub button down below, please smack the hell out of that button. Appreciate it. Okay, so first off, let's get into some of the non-skill offensive, non offensive players that were tagged right at the bat. We got Taylor Moten from the Carolina Panthers, their left tackle. They hit him with the franchise tag after a solid 2020 season. This is a big dub for not only Christian McCaffrey, but whoever the Panthers franchise quarterback ends up being, or whoever their quarterback is in the 2021 season. Um, I expect it to not be Teddy Bridgewater. I think they'll move on from him. I don't think that they you know, are very set on him or anything. So I expect them to move on, but I think that's a good win. Just less less um, transition, especially that's such a pivotal spot, that left tackle spot for Christian McCaffrey and their whole offense in general. Swapping out tackles, especially a good one, and trying to find another one in the draft or via free agency has proven very difficult. So it's good to not have as much turnover on across the offensive line. Excuse me. Next up, you got Brandon Scherf, um, the right guard for the Washington football team. This obviously helps um, Antonio Gibson. It'll help the quarterback, too, keep him upright. I think this really does help Antonio Gibson, though. Scherf's a run-blocking mauler at right guard who just mauls people. Um, obviously, he's a mauler, but uh, yeah, he's just a very talented um, offensive lineman who makes a big difference in that run game, and I think that is going to continue to pay dividends for Antonio Gibson, especially those interior offensive linemen. Those affect the um, running back running game a little bit more, even I think, than the exterior or than the um, tackles. Uh, the tackles definitely help the quarterbacks out a ton, though. The tackles help everybody out, though, as well. Next up, though, we got the left tackle for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Cam Robinson, who I think has started every game in his career so far. That'll be a big help for James Robinson and Trevor Lawrence, who I assume they'll take at the, with the first pick. Um, yeah, I don't think both Taylor Moten and James er, and Cam Robinson. I don't think they're great players, but I think they're very solid NFL tackles. And I mean, there's a reason these teams are paying them thirteen and a half to fourteen million dollars this year. And it's because they don't want to risk, you know, trying to go find. They know how valuable these tackles are, and just even having a solid player at that position that you think is worthy of a franchise tag is a great advantage over most other teams who are going to be looking. So yeah, those are some of the non-offensive skill players and how they affect the skill players and their teams moving forward. All right, first skill position player we're going to talk about today that was hit with the franchise tag: Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson has actually absolutely balled his last two seasons in Chicago. Um, he's been a wide receiver one each of the last two seasons. In 2019, he finished as wide receiver 11, averaging 12.9 fantasy points per game. And then in 2020, last year, he finished as a wide receiver 12. A little better season, though, averaging 13.2 points per game um, in 2020. But um, another thing we have to look at with Allen Robinson, that... Um, yeah, it's the last 2019, he also had 98 receptions and 102 in 2020. So the guy is a target monster, as we said. If we look at the targets as well, in 2019, he had 154 targets. In 2020, he had 151. I bet if we were going to make a list of guys that have 100, 150 targets each of the last two years, it would include Allen Robinson and, and less than five other people's names, almost guaranteed. Um, I still can see him as a, you know, a back-end wide receiver one moving forward, even in Chicago, which... You know, I think this is like a bad landing place in some people's eyes, but that's why I put marginal QB improvement because anytime a quarterback goes to a new offense and has to gel with a new quarterback in one offseason, it's usually pretty difficult. And at least here, he's staying here in the same offense where he's been able to ball with, you know, he had Nick Foles and, and uh, Mitch last year, and he was able to get it done and finish the wide receiver one with those two guys. So I think him being comfortable in the system and the target volume that he's going to get, even if the quarterback play isn't great, I don't think it can get much worse than it's been each of the last two years, and I really do expect him to con continue the production he's been on. He's a super talented wide receiver. There's a reason they hit him with a franchise tag. It's because if you let a guy like this hit free agency, somebody's going to break the bank and, and take him away from you. 
Um, and that's just because he's so talented. And yeah, I expect him to continue to produce for fantasy even when, even though he's in Chicago moving forward. Next up, we've got Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin finished 2019 as the number two wide receiver overall in only 14 games, behind only Michael Thomas with his 149 reception year that year. Now, I think this just shows how high his ceiling was. Obviously, Brady was on that team. It was Jameis, but still, um, he had a deceptive 2020, I, I think, as well. He finished 2020 as a wide receiver 32 overall, but he averaged 13.2 points per game in his 12 games they played. And if we put that in perspective to Allen Robinson, we just talked about it being a back-end wide receiver one, he averaged 13.2 points per game last year as well. So if you take his 16-game pace as well for the – um, what his, for a 2020 season, he would have finished his first year with Brady with 112 targets, 86 receptions, 1,120 yards, and nine touchdowns, which is a great fantasy season. And again, would have put him in the back end of that um, back end wide receiver one. But again, that is with that's last year when they had Antonio Brown, who had 62 targets and only eight games played, I believe, which is you know a ton. And he, that was over the second half, too, when Chris Godwin missed some games and things like that with that finger injury. I think that finger injury really did affect him a lot moving forward. Tom Brady has said how he's, he's got some of the best hands he's ever seen of any of those quarterbacks. or uh, He's got the, some of the best hands he's ever seen of any wide receiver he's ever played with, which means a lot coming from Tom Brady when you play with guys along the lines of Wes Welker, Julian Edelman, Randy Moss, Rob Gronkowski, Deion Branch, some really talented wide receivers in the past that he's played with, Brandon Cooks even. But he says that he has the best hands and is still, you know, very talented. I think when A.B., I expect him to hit the road. I don't I think he'll stick around. Maybe he does because Tampa is one of the only teams that's going to bring him back and he wants to be with Brady again. I don't know. That has yet to be seen. But if I was a betting man, I'd expect him to leave. And I think that will open up even more targets for Chris Godwin and get back to that. Even when he finishes wide receiver two, I think he had 124 targets last year. So him finishing on a 112 target pace last year, I don't think is much of a concern. Especially when you think, like I said, I think expect Antonio Brown most likely to leave. And then I think get right back to that pace. Chris Godwin is also still very young. He's only 24 years old. I think that's a big reason why they hit him with a tag. He's just so young, athletic, explosive. If you let him hit the free agency, similar to Allen Robinson, who is older, but like somebody like the New York Jets is going to break the bank, or the Miami Dolphins that need a position player bad, that need a skill a wide receiver, that need a wide receiver um, bad, would have gone out and would have broke the bank, signed this guy to a five-year massive deal or something like that, and not blink twice about it given his age. So I do think it was a good move by the Buccaneers to tag him, and they've talked about trying to work on a long-term deal in the meantime as well. If something like that happened. Um, yeah, I really like Chris Godwin going forward. I think he's a back-end wide receiver one, similar to Allen Robinson, just because Mike Evans is also there and is going to be a red zone beast. But I do expect Chris Godwin to get a ton of targets in the slot moving forward, especially since he's probably it's going to probably just be him and Mike Evans as the main two shows in town next year. Moving on to some other news, some other NFL news. Dak Prescott secured a $160 million contract. Um, I think the big winners in this, obviously Dak is a winner, um, staying in – Dallas for fantasy with those the offensive line that they have when they're healthy they were banged up last year but when they have a healthy offensive line with Tyron Smith at left tackle Leo Collins at right tackle Zach Martin at right guard I mean you're arguably those guys are all probably top five of their positions maybe not Tyron Smith anymore because of he's been so banged up from injuries but if these guys can return to their level I think they're all top five at their respective positions on one offensive line and then if you look at the skill position players they've got Amari Cooper CeeDee Lamb Michael Gallup still for another year. Um, I would love to go out and try to make a deal for CeeDee Lamb right now. Um, he's a guy I would be buying. you got four years of Dak locked in. You're going to have good quarterback play. I believe in him a ton. I think he's the best wide receiver on that team. I think he is the DK Metcalf of this season. I think he's going to absolutely explode. So that's would be the one guy we go out and get. I also love Dak for this next season. I think people have been sleeping on him too much. Maybe this recent contract will start bumping him up the rankings. But... He has been a great value in redraft so far, and I've loved taking him with that value. Moving on, a guy who did not receive the franchise tag, Aaron Jones. This is big because this most likely means he's moving on to a new team besides the Green Bay Packers, and he's been a top five running back each of the last two seasons on the Packers. So leaving, you know, best case scenario for him was probably to receive the franchise tag, um, stay another year because then he'd probably be another top, like he'd be ranked 
right around those top five running backs. But still, I think Aaron Jones is going to go to a New York Jets or a Miami Dolphins. Somebody who's going to break the bank for him, and he's going to get the ball because of his contract situation. So I'm not really worried about him. He's a super talented back, and I think wherever he goes, he'll be a winner and he'll produce for fantasy, honestly. Kenny Galladay also did not receive the tag. It'll be interesting to see where he goes now that he's the best wide receiver basically on the market, I think you could say, with Allen Robinson and Chris Godwin both being franchise tagged. He's a talented receiver. He's more of a big body down the field guy, not so much as the intermediate routes, but he's just getting better and better, and he's got elite size, and he really snatches the ball of the air. So if he had stayed in with the Lions, you know, and he was only targeting town, just him and Hawkinson, I don't think it would have been the worst thing with Jared Goff because they'll be, they'll be down in so many games, but if he could go somewhere with a solid quarterback, get some money, he's a very talented guy who I think um, could produce for fantasy definitely depending on his landing spot next year. The talent's there. We just got to see where he lands and if he'll get the opportunity to be, you know, an alpha number one receiver somewhere. That's all for this video. If you made it till now and you like it, please hit the like button on this video. If you like the content I post on the channel, hit that sub button. If you have any questions or comments, um, leave them in the comment section. I'll reply to all comments that we have down there. So until next time, peace out. This is Fancy Joe. Thank you for watching.